I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I had a question of how do you handle the aduana or customs as you bring in household goods for your life here in Nicaragua? So we're going to talk about that in my upcoming trip or actually ongoing trip if you're watching this when it comes out by right after the bump. <laughs> So when you move into a new country, like Nicaragua, you often want to bring a lot of household goods with you. You have a lot of things you already own, presumably, and you want to bring them. Or in some cases, maybe you don't already own them, that would be strange, but you probably do. do. But just in case you don't, in some cases you may have specific things you want to buy and bring those to wherever, wherever it is you're going to go, likely here to Nicaragua, since that's why you're watching this channel. So we're going to talk about that today. Before we do that, by the time this video is coming out, I'm actually, unless something has gone horribly wrong, I am in Belize where I'm going to be filming on the day that this is releasing, which is Monday. Uh, so I'm actually uh, flying out to Guatemala City on the day that I'm recording this, which is Saturday. I'm gonna be going to San Salvador, which is actually my first time there. I've been to El Salvador multiple times, but I've never actually gone to the capital or used the airport, which is really surprising. So I'm gonna be going to the airport. I'll provide as best I can a little bit of information about what I think of the airport, but I have very little time there. Then I'm flying right on to Guatemala City where I'm going to be spending the night. I'm staying at the, the Hilton Garden Inn. I will have already stayed there by the time we get there. And I talk a bit about how I use Hilton whenever I'm going somewhere because, not because it's Hilton, like I like them, but that's not the point. The point is, uh, as a traveler, I select a single hotel chain that works for me. You could be using Hyatt or Holiday Inn, Intercontinental, uh, Choice, whoever makes sense for you and the places that you're going and, and the style you like. And I stick with it and I do a lot of point stuff. So we just did a trip uh, that we're going to talk about that I that we did all of our, our hotel stays on points. Like it really worked out for us. Uh, but so this is a trip where again, I'm going to be in Guatemala City. I'm going to be there at the airport. A lot of times I would use an Airbnb, but because I'm just flying into the airport, spending the night and going right back to the airport and getting out, I just want everything to be as smooth as possible. I want absolutely no opportunity for something to go wrong, especially because it's a business trip. So I'm staying at the Hilton Garden Inn, which is cheap. It's like $106 right there in Guatemala City. So unfortunately, I'm not doing anything cool in Guatemala. I'll do as, film as much as I can. Then the next morning, Sunday morning, yesterday for you, I will be flying in a Cessna. I will do my best to document that out to Belize City. And today I am in Belize all day. I do have meetings. I have work I've got to do, but I'm also going to do my best to film some of it. Hopefully I've got some Belize content to bring to you guys because this is my first time in Belize with this. Once I land in Belize, this will be every single country in North America. Every single country in Central America will now be under my belt. Not the Caribbean islands, like that takes a lot to get all of them and they're not part of the continent, but of the actual North American continent, this will knock out every country for me. Belize has been hanging out there as my one, the one country I haven't been to for quite some time. And I believe it's my 40th country overall that I've been to. I actually maintain a list. I mean, that's normal, but... I forgot to put Costa Rica on it, and I've been there for a, a lot, right? So that was funny. Uh, so I think this is my 40th country. I'm excited about that, and excited just to see Belize. So that's going to be very cool. So how do you bring in household goods? So the first thing I say to everybody is just don't. Like seriously, consider not bringing them in. Why would you want to move household goods internationally? If you're moving from apartment to apartment inside your own country, US, Canada, England, whatever, it's relatively normal to pack up all your stuff, put it in a moving truck and move somewhere. However, even that is often not worth it. People assume it is because it just feels like it should be the way you do things. And it's what we see on TV. It's what big companies pay to have done for you. But in a logical sense, often it doesn't actually work out as well as you'd think. When you move, a lot of that stuff could have stayed with your old house, your old apartment. You may have made some money for it. It's worn out. It may not be something you want to keep. Shipping it may damage it. It's going to cost money to ship it. It's going to be an effort to ship it. There's just a lot to go wrong. And it means you're getting to a new place and putting in an old microwave, an old blender, an old everything. If you're not actually significantly saving money, it might be nice to buy new things. Uh, get a tax write-off on the old ones, sell the old ones, give them to someone, do something, buy things that make sense, get things that are new, get things that fit exactly for your new environment. There's just a lot of reasons, even if you're just moving, a real, if you're moving across town, yeah, pack it up, like I get it. But if you're like really, really moving a long distance, and I've done this a number of times in my life, the cost and effort of moving household goods uh, when you when it's something you don't need to is 
is big. It really is. Now, when you're moving international, now, if you're, okay, if you're moving from the U.S. to Canada, you're moving from the U.S. to Mexico, and you're going to drive it, all right, maybe, right? If you're not going to be taxed, if they're not going to hit it as an import, if, 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 right? If all those things line up, you have a few items that fits in your car, no one's going to, okay, that could make sense. But coming to Nicaragua, where basically that means you're going to ship it, you've got some challenges and what household good is really going to qualify as making sense for that. And when I talk to people, everyone has pretty much the same reaction. And we did too. So I totally get this. It's, I own couches. I own TVs. I own all these things that feel big and expensive. And to some degree they are. And I've owned them for some time. I'm attached to them. And I've already spent the money. Of course I want to move them down with me. But do you really? Put a price tag on how much, first of all, do some math. How much did they cost originally? And do you have some really strong emotional tie to this particular item, right? If it's like a big emotional thing, like this is the couch where, you know, my, my dog was born and I just have to have it because I'll always, whatever. There, you can't put a price tag on whatever it is you're putting a price tag on. But if you're talking about normal things, like, well, I bought this couch. I like this couch. It's kind of comfy. You know what? Just buy another couch, right? Get over the emotional attachment to just random objects. It, it, we all have it, but it's not healthy. So think hard. Is the stuff you own actually so important that you would, one, take the risk of shipping it, and two, spend the money to move an old thing you already own that you bought for a different situation and move it to a new place, whether that's furniture or a blender or a microwave, whatever, do you really want to bring that thing to a new space where it wasn't custom purchased for that space? Probably, almost always, no, you don't want to. It's better to get to the place you're going to be, make all your decisions, rent the place, figure out where you want to be, figure out all the things you need, and then buy new or used what makes sense in the new location, Nicaragua in this case. And so that's almost always what you want to do, partially because you're going to get here and be like, oh, if I just went without owning things, I can show up in an apartment and buy everything that first week. I just go to the store, find the things that work for me, get them as I need them, it's actually not very expensive. It's super fast, no hassles. But if you're going to ship household goods, what are you going to do? Are you going to bring them in before you're a resident? That means a year or two years before you get any kind of tax deferment. So you're going to do a full import with full taxes, all, as much headache as you could possibly imagine. And still, it could take weeks before they get to you, if you're lucky. There, there are cases where it could take months, but we'll assume several days to a couple weeks is how long you're gonna wait. But if you had just bought locally, it probably would have been cheaper because those taxes can hit 100%, not normally. They can get up there and they're gonna tax you on the new value. They don't care that it's used, right? Everyone says, well, it's used, it's not worth anything. That doesn't matter, right? You don't really get to negotiate with customs. They put a dollar figure on it and you owe it. And you can say, well, I'm just going to abandon it. And they, they can still tax you whether you abandon it or not. And you say, well, what are they going to do to me? They are going to deport you if you don't pay your taxes. right? So this is not a process that makes sense. Everyone thinks they're going to somehow work their way out of customs. But customs takes your stuff, knows where you are, and has the ability to deport you or tax you at a moment's notice. So you don't want to mess with customs in a stupid way. When you come into customs, you have to be prepared to pay the taxes on whatever you're going to do and work through their process. Now, if you have a shipper do it for you, yeah, you may not be the one that's worked through the process, but you still have to pay whatever the, the fees are, right? Maybe you work that out, maybe it's bulk, and that's, we'll talk about that. But people have this imaginary situation where they can argue that they don't owe import tax or the rate on the import tax that the customs or aduana has levied on their products. And that is, you don't have that, right? There's no negotiation that once in a while you get to explain something. But, and in every case that I talk to someone and they're like, well, they shouldn't tax me on this because the because that they say is an exact explanation as to why it should be taxed because they're importing it. They're acting as an importer who's trying not to pay their importation duties. Well, of course, that qualifies you for being taxed. I, it's really amazing how much people act surprised that being an importer triggers a tax and that arguing that they're doing exactly the thing that everyone expects to get taxed. And I don't mean everyone in Nicaragua. I mean, every country in the world expects to tax you under these circumstances. The only time that places like the U.S. doesn't tax you is if you fly under the radar that it's just too little and they just, it's not worth the effort. But they, you still technically owe those taxes, you just didn't declare it or whatever. But if you're bringing in shipping containers to the U.S., to Canada, they will catch you. They're going to, you're importing and you owe money on that, right? 
Now, it's a more defined process and easier to slip through the radar because in Nicaragua, there's so little coming in that they really notice. But if, if you think you're going to make this, this argument, oh, but I don't owe money on the furniture because I'm just going to use it here in country. That's what an import is, that you're going to use it here in the country. The argument that you, in theory, would make is, I, this is a couch that I take with me everywhere I travel. I always like to sit on it. So I put it into every hotel room I get into, and when I move on to the next country, I'll take it with me. They'll never believe you. I don't believe you. But that would be a logical argument if, for some reason, that crazy scenario came up. That's a situation where, in theory, you shouldn't have to pay import tax. But anything you bring in with the intent of this being its final destination, that's what imports are for. That's where you have to pay the money at customs. So basically, any household good, anything that shows up as a household good and you bring in, is going to hit the importation system. And that's fine, not a big deal. You're totally allowed to do that, right? Just because you pay taxes on it doesn't mean you did something wrong. This is the process. And every business has to do that. And that's why businesses and the government get angry if you try to skirt this process, because you're cheating businesses who are selling furniture in the country and or whatever, the household goods, and they have to pay their import taxes. Well, if you get to bring things in without paying your import taxes, you just stole from legitimate businesses that are paying their taxes. And that means you also stole from the government. So both the government and the private companies get pretty angry, plus all the employees of those com companies who don't make as much money or they don't get to hire as many people or whatever and don't get to pay their income taxes because people are skirting the importation duties. It adds up and in a country where jobs are at a premium because there aren't enough to go around. This stuff matters a lot. This is where a lot of the revenue of the country comes from. So they're very picky about this and they watch for it very closely. So if you're gonna import household goods, be prepared. Assume you're going to pay import duties and those numbers can be very large. So what do you actually do? What is the mechanisms? Assume you go through all this and you say, Scott, I know it doesn't make logical sense or I have a very specific case and I need to bring it in anyway. Okay, that's fine. Now, what do you do? If you're bringing in small amounts, really small amounts, and it's like physically very small, and you can put it in your luggage, well, it's okay to bring it in in your luggage. They're probably gonna see you at customs as you come through at the aduana uh, screening, and they'll ask you about it. Chances are you'll have to pay taxes on it. The thing that really sucks is that if you do that, there's a good chance you're gonna be pulled into the aduana line, and they're gonna take your stuff, and they're gonna put it in a place where it has to be assessed, and then they're gonna charge you a tax. Doesn't mean you're in trouble, it's just a nuisance. And when I did this three years ago, trust me, it was not a good idea. I ended up having to spend three days in Managua. That means I had to pay for taxis, hotels, staff, all kinds of things to make this possible for me because I just moved here. I didn't have a car. I didn't know my way around. I didn't know how to deal with stuff. Luckily, I had a staff here or I would have no idea what to do. I had no idea how to even find the aduana because it's not at the airport. So I flew in and it was like two items. They said it's probably a little bit more, just a couple items. They wanted to charge me tax on them. So I had to go to the aduana office and explain what they were, have them assess them, show them what documentation I could, and then find out how much they were gonna charge me. It took three days of doing the three entire days. I was getting up early, not getting enough sleep at night, paying outrageous amounts of money. I probably paid three or $400 of paying people to assist me in doing this and then paid easily six or $700 all to bring in less than $1,000 worth of stuff. Had I purchased it new and it well, none of it was new. So this is really expensive. Now it's fine. We got the items that we wanted. We got them in and we used them and like, it's not a big deal. And uh, it was a good learning experience. And I just wouldn't recommend it unless you absolutely need to do it. But that time is something that people don't necessarily calculate that you might be stuck for a long time dealing with this and you may have to pay a lot of ancillary costs that you didn't think about, like people to assist you, hotel rooms or whatever, because it's not like you can stay home and do it. They make you go into Managua. If you live there, it's not so bad and, and deal with it there can be very complicated, especially if you weren't planning on it and you don't have a place to stay and everything lined up or you're expected to be somewhere or whatever. So it, it can be a big process if you bring it in yourself. You can bring it with a shipper. So we mention Nika Box all the time because it's the one everyone talks about, but there's lots of these kinds of services. You can ship to them only up to a certain size and they will ship to the country and different carriers do it by weight, do it by the number of items, do it by knowing what it is you have. It could be all over the map. Look at those options, ship that way. You will pay a premium, but it's generally a predictable premium. So you're less likely to be surprised. You're more likely to be say like, okay, that was a hundred dollar item. I had to pay $30 to bring it in. Okay, is it worth $130 uh, total $30 now to get an item that you paid a hundred for last week, last year, 10 years ago into the country? 
you can make those evaluations and, and determine on your own what makes sense. That's fine. If you're going to bring in more than that, then you're going to want to work with a real shipper, right? You're going to want to put things on a pallet or into a shipping container and put them on a cargo ship and ship them down either through Calabasa, uh, Bilwi in the northeast or to Corinto in the west. That's going to take quite a bit of time. This is where it starts becoming very difficult to justify because how are you living for so long without these items that are supposedly so critical? What are you going to do? You're not going to have a couch, not going to have your household goods. No, you're probably going to replace them while you're waiting for the ones you like to get there. Now, if they're worth millions of dollars and no one's going to notice they're worth millions of dollars, okay, maybe you won't take that chance. But what if they fall off the ship? Ships sink all the time these days. Well, not so much the ships, but the cargo falls off of them. So that's something to worry about. If it's like super nostalgic, are you okay with it not making it? There's a lot to consider, and that's not really the point of this video, but it's important. It's really, really difficult to justify bringing in household goods to the country. But if you have large ones or a large number of them, you're going to want to palletize them or, or cargo containerize them and ship them in that way. And then you're just going through cargo shippers uh, and dealing with that in a completely different mode. And that I know of literally no person who has successfully gotten that in. And I say this all the time. I only know a couple of people who have attempted this because it's such a just generally, un, once you're here and thinking about it, everyone says the same thing. What was I thinking? Why would I consider that? So good. Get here, evaluate it, and then realize that you're going to spend a ton of money for something you clearly don't need because you're living without it. But of the few people I know who did that and still said, I'm going to ship it, it's been a 100% loss. Everything they shipped never arrived or it semi arrived, but wasn't cleared to come off the ship and they never got it. They lost all of their possessions. Now, if they had insurance and stuff, hopefully they're okay. I don't know their insurance situation. That's completely independent of the shipping to Nicaragua, but the shipping companies, they were unable, even with, they had references, they had all kinds of verifications. The shipping company was a scam and stole all their stuff. They never actually uh, shipped it and released it, right? They didn't complete the process. They took off with the money and they had already collected all the money for the ship and just vanished. And so they were left with nothing. And that's a big risk. Now, it, it, does that happen to 1%, 50%, 99%? We have no idea because I only know the few people I've talked to who've done this because nobody tries it anymore, partially because it doesn't make sense and partially because people hear these stories and go, oh, I want to really reconsider this whole process. And that's basically where you end up. So really think carefully about that. But if that's what you're going to do, that's what you have to do. And no, because of that experience, the reason I'm explaining that is I cannot give you a reference to anyone who's successfully done this to Nicaragua. I have never worked with a shipper who successfully have done it. I have never known a person here in Nicaragua who has successfully done it. That doesn't mean there aren't millions of people who are successfully doing it. It just means I have not encountered them and I don't know who it is. I don't know where you, I'm sure if you go down to San Juan del Sur and you have to, tons of expats, you have tons of expats who want to do this. Whereas up here in Leon, we know lots of expats and none of them want to do this. So there, there just isn't very much opportunity to, to get experience from this. If you're in San Juan, you talk to a bunch of people, I'm sure you would gather a lot of experiences and find shippers that people like consistently. However, that's what people we know did and still they lost everything. So be wary even still. And I'm not saying that those people were scamming them. The shipper was, those people probably used that shipper and actually did receive things. And at some point that shipper is like, we just want to get our money and get out. And they got caught. It was kind of like Russian roulette with shipping containers. So uh, if my audience, if there's any of you who have tried this and successfully or unsuccessfully uh, shipped stuff, get down in those comments, let me know or make a video and we'll paste you in. That would be fantastic. Um, that's, that's the only way we're going to get references on this, right? We're just not going to have an opportunity to learn about it until people talk about what they've had done and how it worked for them. Um, but really seriously think twice before doing it. But those are the processes. Those are really your only options. Um, and, and all of them are completely legal. You're fine to try them in your mileage may vary. Uh, but you really can buy anything that you actually need here in the country, short of like really, really specific things. And those things we generally bring in in luggage and it's no big deal. It's, you know, just a small item here or there. And if we know it's going to be a problem in the luggage, we totally just pay a shipper and don't worry about it because we do not want the headache, no matter whether we think we could save money or not. We just, we just don't want to go through that. So as always, like and subscribe. But if you do have questions, comments, any of that stuff, get down there in the uh, the comment area down below and ask your questions. Your questions drive the community and give me topics to talk about. So I really appreciate when you guys do that. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And if you would, post a link to the show on social media somewhere. Tell someone about the show and I will see all of you 
from Belize tomorrow. And now on the screen, if we're lucky, four videos will pop up. They rarely do, I guess. But if you click on one of those or any of my other episodes, it tells the algorithm that this was a great show and to uh, keep telling people about it.